Hey, it's time for Tech Talk, because we got lots of cool stuff coming up tonight, talking about tech. Oh, man. We answer tons of questions on the show tonight. We've got Richard from the UK asking about IVR. We got Kyle asking about the Zoom H5. We've got questions about Audacity, converting files. We got questions about levels and using Dropbox and other tools to sync your files. So if that's stuff you want to know about, make sure you stay tuned tonight. All right. Coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now, VO2Gogo.com, everything you need to become a successful voice artist. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. The VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And by VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Time for some tech talk. Tech talk. That's why we talk. started the show, and that's what we're going to keep giving you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. We can't stop talking about tech. Yeah. We, and we got some great stuff. We've got your tech update. We want to talk a little bit about NAM. And uh, I want to demonstrate right. a, a couple of things about the new Audacity, which is really kind of kind of cool. And really, it, it, they've changed it a little bit. And, uh, and we've got a couple of questions, too. Fantastic. All Sounds right. Good. Where should we start? Let's start with your tech update. All right. Well, you guys love passwords, don't you? No. Said no one ever. <laughs> passwords are a giant pain in the neck. And that's the problem with passwords is because they're such a pain in the neck, we get really lazy with passwords. And if you're like a lot of us, even myself, I will reuse the same passwords for certain things over and over again. The problem is, is sometimes those passwords get picked up along the way and put into the hands of guys that want to steal from you. And this can happen. And the thing is, you don't know if it's happened to you. Right. It's pretty much impossible to know. So one thing you can do is like psychotically change your passwords constantly, which who's going to do that with 400 websites, right? I can't remember the ones I have. <laughs> That's um... one way to deal with it. Another way is to use a service called LastPass. And uh, they're not a sponsor here. They, they do sponsor a lot of webcasts, but I've been using them for probably five years. And LastPass is a password manager. So what you do is you, you can use it in a couple ways. One, you can just have it memorize your passwords, the ones that you use already. And if you have websites that are like, you know, a newspaper you read online or a place where you buy beer or something like that, having a super strong password maybe isn't a big deal for that, right? But for banking stuff, the IRS, things like that, you want really strong passwords. That's why I like the thumbprint on my phone. That's pretty handy. <laughs> but still, it's only doing all it's doing is recalling whatever the lame password was that you came up in the first place. So you might want to check out some tools. In fact, I found some resources that might be helpful for you guys. And one of them, I have it on my notes here, is called Have I Been Pwned? Dot com. Have I been pwned? Have I been pwned? Pwned. Pwned. So pwned is geek speak for owned. Ah. They take the O and they replace it with a P. Why? I don't know. Ask a millennial geek that you know nearby. <laughs> 
in your basement, you have one right now, go ask him, why is it written that way? But um, basically what it's saying is, have I been owned.com with, with a P, have I been pwned? The whole point of this is a place where you can go and enter a couple different things. You can go in there and enter your email address, first of all, and it will tell you how many databases online your email address has existed and been leaked from. So it'll say this particular website where you use this email has been hacked and your email is now in the wild. So just so you might want to know that. So that's freaky enough. But then on their drop down menu, they have one for password. And this is where it gets fun. <laughs> type in those passwords that you use for everything. Type it in there and search and see what it says. Chances are, and the one that I use all the time, it's in there. Hmm. Because some website that I, I used that password with had been hacked, and that password and email address went out in a database, which is now available in the black market or God knows where. So that password is out in the wild. So if, you ha if your password shows up and have I been pwned.com, change it. If it's a website you care about, <laughs> it's not something where you bought your mom flowers 12 years ago, but something really important. <laughs> You change the password right away. It's, ama so. it's amazing how, how people are just hacking into everything. It's getting real Nothing bad. is safe. There's countries out there who have no military power. But, but that's, what they their, do that's have, their gross national product is hacking. What they have is hackers. <laughs> Damn straight. So you really got to have it together. So anyway, LastPass, you can, if, if you get tired of coming up with passwords, because that's some people do have clever password schemes, which more power to you if you do. If you don't use LastPass and just have it generate a password, and it's going to generate one crazy password. It could be 8, 12, 16. You can make it 24, whatever, how many digits it needs to be for that website. And you can say whether it has to have special characters. When it's done, it's going to make you a random password that you are never going to remember, ever. Right. But that's okay. LastPass remembers it. But you got to remember your LastPass You got to remember password. that LastPass password. <laughs> Write it on something and put it in your safe deposit box or somewhere safe. Because that's a really strong password. I, I per particularly use a password that's an entire sentence. Really? For my LastPass thing. You're probably thinking, that's a pain. You mean every time I go to my web, my, you know, go to a website, I got to log into pass LastPass with a 25 word sentence? To... No, you don't. You can, you can, you have your computer set to unlock your passwords using different things like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. Like on my smartphone, all the iPhones now do it. Um, or they use the face recognition. Right. Um, my smartphone does it. I have lo LastPass log in using my thumbprint. That's pretty hard to hack. Not impossible, but pretty hard to hack. Right. And then LastPass recalls the password for me. Um, it does more stuff too. Like if you're on a team of people and they all have to access a website, instead of giving everybody on the team the password, they all have a LastPass account and you secretly share the password. They actually never see it. LastPass knows what it is and it fills it in for you. So there's there's some really cool tools out there. If you've been hacked or if you're concerned about it, I would highly recommend this. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, even if it's not about security, just freaking remembering your passwords. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I'm with a client on the phone. I'm like, okay, go ahead and log into your iTunes account. Which is your iTunes account? Is that the same as your iCloud? Yes. Ah, dang. I tried, oh man, it's making me do a new password. Like I hear that every week from somebody. I hear it from my wife every morning. Yes. <laughs> if you had it stored in a secure place like this, that wouldn't happen to you. You can also put other sensitive data in there. I have my social security number in there. I have a lot of sensitive data in this database. I mean, you're probably thinking it's dangerous to have it all in one place, but I'm telling you, LastPass is something that's being trusted by a lot of IT geeks and security people. I mean, it's, it's it's legit. It's really really secure. So I would trust it. I'd give it a shot. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Security's all over the place. Well, you and I are hitting the road this week. That's right. And we're going down to Anaheim. That's right. And our friend Morag. Ma She's yeah, Morag McPherson too. will be with us, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to NAM. N A M M, which stands for the National Association of Music Merchants. And we've, we've been there. I've been there twice. You've been, this will be your eighth time. At least. Oh, I'm losing Christ. track, man. Yeah. I've been going since before I lived in LA. Oh, I actually wow. flew out one time to come with my dad. So right. I, it's fun. It's, it's everything. It's about musical uh, instruments and musical technology because it's guys who sell 
music stuff. Anything that supports the music, music business, business, disco right. lighting for right. DJing, everything. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's huge. I mean, I remember first time going into the convention hall going. It is literally the Disneyland of audio equipment. It, I mean, it is. It's like. <laughs> It's yeah. so much stuff. Yeah. And of course, all of the stuff that we use in voiceover was designed primarily for making music. Pretty much. Except and for the voiceover headphones, headphones and right. the voiceover microphone. microphone right. Pretty much everything else was originally for music. Right. But we go there because we want to see what's the latest and what's the greatest and, uh, you know, and report back to you. It's like, here it is. You know, uh, you know, we think it's okay or uh, it's interesting just to learn about those things. So yeah. we're going to talk to a lot of these manufacturers individually. We see people we've seen there many times before we see old friends we also see uh you know we stumble on things and there's one whole hall i think it's called hall e yeah it's down in the basement <laughs> yeah we found some cool stuff there and that's last where year. you yeah you go there because that's less expensive booths and right. so vendors that can't swing the really big flashy they go down there and you, you discover new stuff it's kind of fun sometimes right that's where i saw isovox right which is you know a really unique product developed by a really unique guy from sweden which isn't selling really well yet because it's not quite the right thing for voiceover, but still really cool design, really interesting product, you know, and we discover really cool stuff. And when we do find something that's super relevant, then we make sure we cover it and you guys get to see it. All right. And we'll be, we'll be, be releasing all these interviews in the next, over the next couple of weeks. We'll have them here on the show. Yep. We'll have them on YouTube so you can see for yourself all the fun that it is that we're doing i think sue is going to actually be there too sue happens to be there on thursday i don't know how when you go to the show if you see somebody you know it's an unbelievable random what are you doing chance. here yeah, now i'm hoping i'm going to see stevie you wonder uh, stevie wonder for maybe the <laughs> fifth or sixth time i mean i've seen stevie wonder wandering the halls of nam aim aimlessly sorry bad joke um i've seen <laughs> Stevie, I love you. <laughs> I've told you that in person. I love you. Uh, I've seen him wandering the halls, like checking out mixing consoles and all kinds of gear. He, he, Stevie Wonder is a huge gearhead. Yeah. He's a massive geek. He loves. It. I saw him sitting at a huge Yamaha console, checking it all out. It was <laughs> so cool, man. I mean, I've seen him more live there than seen him in concert. You know? Wow. So anyway, I hope to see a lot of cool fr friends like Sue and Martha Khan's going to be there. Yeah. And, a lot of people we know are going to be down yeah, there. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. And I get to stay at my mom's. Oh, man, that's cool. Yeah. She's, she's real close. She's yeah. real, like 10 minutes away from there. It's like, I'm coming down this week. <laughs> anyway, I uh, want to do some Daw View and demonstrate some stuff. Should we do that after a break? Uh, we what could do, do that. Why don't we take a break? About right. Yeah. All right. And if you've got a if you've got a tech question, throw it in the chat room right now because we'd love to answer your question either in our our website chat room or in Facebook, and uh, we'll answer it here on Voiceover Body Shop. So that's coming right up after this. Imagine mandatory retirement at age fifty seven, and J. Rodney Turner wasted no time when he got that news. He decided what the next act in life was going to be for him. Voiceover. And fortunately for him, he chose the one form of acting, voice acting, for which the demand far exceeds the number of available performers. Audiobook narration. He worked hard and smart, and J. Rodney Turner's name is now on the cover of over 100 of those audiobooks. For sale right now on Audible, which he produced in just the last four years or so. Want to know a secret? Here it is for free. David H. Lawrence the 17th has just released the first episode of a free video training series devoted to audiobooks, and it tells just how J. Rodney Turner did it in vivid detail. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs to see it. If the idea of getting paid to tell stories appeals to you, or if you're already doing audiobooks but aren't having the success you know you're capable of achieving, this video is a must-see. Check out the video here. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. 
Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. And we're back. Got a lot of questions. I wanted to demonstrate a couple of quick things with Audacity. Great. Because uh, they updated it a couple months ago, and it's really kind of a different program now. I mean, it, it works it's the same evolved, way. but becoming more, well, twisted wave-like, I yeah, guess. Yes, yeah, yeah, sort of. You but still in, can't scrub with it. Okay. But I did notice a couple of interesting things that I wanted to point out. One of the things that you got to do when you're setting up your software mm -hmm. uh, is, of course, make sure your levels are right. And they give you the chance to do that. Uh, there's the, the icons are kind of new. And uh, if you could just show, can you show that full screen there, Sue? There we go. Perfect. Nicely done. Uh, up here, you can see there's the, uh, the microphone uh icon that is right next to where the input meter is and if you click on that and it says start monitoring it will start to monitor and you'll be able to take get the level on your voice where you should be modulating between minus six and minus four mm -hmm. and uh so that's a good way to check that before you have before you hit record then once you hit record by hitting the record button uh it will Start recording your voice. And by the way, that's what your waveform should look like, like that, not little tiny things. It's amazing. I keep getting stuff, little, little tiny waveforms from people. And uh, it's, you know, and once you've got that, here's something that I don't think a lot of people This is know. new, right? This, well, no, this isn't really new, but I'll bet you people didn't know that you could stretch it out like that. Oh, I do that all the time. I do. I, uh, you know, and but some people like, and they'll, they'll, they'll start piling up other tracks <laughs> underneath, mm -hmm. but you, you now get a nice big view of it. And, uh, it, it helps a whole lot to do that. And then, uh, you know, the, and then you can, of course, zoom in, you know, using the, uh, the, you know, the zoom in tool mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it, it seems to be a slightly better program now. Uh, and also, I also found out it's got sort of a punch and roll on it now. Sort of a punch and roll. Sort so of how, a punch how, and roll. How would you describe it? How, how would I describe work? it? Well, what you would do is, you know, you would <laughs> place a marker somewhere. And then it's under, uh, I believe it's under transport, transport I have not options. played with it. I know they added it. It's, uh, there's an overdub on here now. Overdub makes sense. Yeah. So if you hit record, it would overdub what's already there. That's right. Whereas in Twisted Wave, when you hit record, it doesn't overwrite, it inserts it. Right. And now apparently you can scrub. All right. So it's becoming more, and I think right below that line, I think is where the scrub is. Yeah. Is yeah. it, I it, think it's kind of twisted wavy. Yeah, it, so you should be able to do the that. The space now. between that bar and the this empty gray line. Right. It's like that's how twist. Yeah. Try, try dragging inside there. Try that. Is that doing it? No. Well, like the audio. It's like that's how twist. Yeah. Try, hey, there it is. Dragging how do you that's like that? That's just like that? twisted wave. Very similar, yeah. Oh, well, that's that's a major improvement on there. Hey, there it is. Exactly. Okay. So how, how about... Like um, very similar. How about no, punch and roll recording? Oh, you have to. Your web page is open. That's why it's so how about, doing that. Thanks. How yeah. about um, the now? I think another new thing that it does is when you stop and hit record again, it doesn't keep making new tracks. Well, have you tried that yet? Let's see. Son of a gun! Yeah, it that's doesn't, what, it doesn't, oh man, what an improvement! Like that we've been is. waiting for Audacity to do that, change that feature. Well. Since Audacity. Since so, Audacity, which is a long Congratulations, Audacity, for listening to the viewers and the listeners and the users, and boom. Yeah. Now it works like everything else. Go play with it. Yeah. I mean, if you've got Audacity, which all of you do since it was free, go look at some, you know, make sure you get the new update, which is, what is it? It's now... Um, 1.2.2.2. Uh, 2. 2. 2. 2. 2. 2.2.2.2. 2.2.2.2. <laughs> and uh, I like it. Yeah, good, good improvements. Good improvement, especially for nothing. Yeah. And you know what? The noise reduction tool on it is pretty freaking good. It's, it's surprisingly strong. Like, I've actually had people export audio into it for noise reduction, 
and then bring it back into their other DAW for editing. Right. Amazingly, it works that yeah. well. And pitch and pitch and speed. Right. If you want to speed something up in Twisted Wave, it's mm -hmm. okay. Audacity does it really well. It's yeah. pretty pretty. Amazing. How did they do that? Awesome. All right. Should well, we, we got lots questions? of questions. We should. We should. Let's answer some of these questions. Cool. Bring uh, them up on your screen because it's easier for me to face the mic when I read off your screen versus mine. Okay, let's do that. And my eyesight still hanging in there, so I think I can read it okay. from all the way over here. All right, first question from Richard in the UK. Hello. Hey, Sorry I did that. I apologize. I will never do that again. I <laughs> heard that certain types of VO work, example of being like e-learning and IVR, can involve creating hundreds of separate files and dealing with them needs a digital audio workstation that can cope with batch processing. If so, does Reaper have this facility? Hmm. I don't know. Does I've Reaper not, batch I don't, process? Not using Reaper, I really don't know. George well, is going to research that I'm question. We'll find out while but, you're... Well, I can tell you that in Twisted Wave, it's, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of folks. In fact, this was a topic that came up in the Twisted Wave user group, Twisted Wave VO group on Facebook. People were talking about how we love Twisted Wave because it works great with... And they started naming all the other DAWs like right. Reaper, Studio One, and they love editing or love they love doing certain things in Twisted Wave. It's it's a great utility. Um, I know a producer that uses Nuendo. It's like a fifteen hundred dollar program. He still uses Twisted Wave for doing batch processing because it does it really really well. It's amazing that you can spend all that money. And generally, when you're buying when you're buying a program like that that's really expensive, you're buying it for a lot of functionality. The chances are you don't need. Yeah. Uh, so don't think that, oh, this program is going to sound so much better. It's all ones and zeros, my friends. There was a day that may have been a big deal 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> Not anymore, yeah. really. But I, I was saying that uh, in Twisted Wave, you just put markers down, you number the markers, and you go split by markers. And <clears throat> I've done 90 slide presentations, and it cuts the editing time down by like two-thirds. It's it's amazing exactly. stuff. That's a really good one, and you can do it in in in, in audition. It's you go to uh, you click on you put a marker down and you right click on it and you get the chance to make turn it into a range marker and you stretch it out and you can put a bunch of ranges over the audio and lump and label those markers and then export by. Things in By range, range or in, within is? range markers, yeah, and, yeah. It, and it names them and just does the same thing. So, those are that's a lot easier than batch processing because I mean you have to do it as you edit each particular slide or each particular file, but it will do it right. Okay, George the, is now showing us under the file menu. There is a batch file batch converter function in Reaper. It's there. Question answered. So. I haven't used it before, but it looks somewhat similar to the way the one that I'm familiar with in Twisted Wave works. Um, you bring a bunch of files in. You can use effects, so that does actually work kind of like Twisted Wave. You can click Use Effects and load an effects chain. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's very similar to the way Twisted Wave works. So there you go. It all does. Right. All right. They all do it now. Yeah. Uh, Michael Kennedy from Palo Alto, California, the smartest community in America, <laughs> aside from Los Alamos, I think. Uh, what security software and, well, number one, what security software and two, cloud backup software might you suggest or thoughts where I could read further about these topics? Hmm. Okay. Um, security software. So I'm assuming he's talking about virus scanning? Probably. I'm not really sure what security software he's talking about, but maybe he's talking about that from a general perspective. Well, right. LastPass, we already talked about. That's right. an absolute no-brainer. If you don't do anything, at least start there. Um, the next thing is running Mac OS, which almost never is hacked. Almost never is Never? Hacked. It is rarely, rarely <laughs> ever. Hardly ever. Yeah, it's, it's extremely rare. I won't say never, because someone will say, well, that, that, that was this one thing that came out. And <laughs> no, it's trust me, it's never... You'll almost never have to worry about being, um, uh, but on Windows, Windows has Defender, and I know when I was a Windows user, I used AVG mm -hmm. for virus scanning. That was that really one. popular. Um, and then what was the other part of that question? It says uh, about um, uh, cloud services. Oh, for cloud uh, services? Yeah. yeah. So assuming you mean file sync or file backup, I'll just I'll, let me just tell you what I use, and okay. then you can decide if it's a, I use CrashPlan. 
and that backs up all my computers. Now, Crash Plan, I'm going to give you a wag of the finger on this. They changed their licensing up, and then midstream, all of a sudden, instead of five computers being backed up for 15 bucks a month, it was five computers being backed up for $15 a month each. So my bill went <laughs> like that, and I didn't notice for a couple months. Shame on me. So Crash Plan, not as cheap as it used to be, but still, I use Crash Plan to back up important stuff. It has saved my butt many times, and others I know have saved uh, saved their butts. Um, and then, so that's cloud based. Um, and then for file backup or synchronizing, I use Dropbox. I basically run my entire business in Dropbox. Yeah. And I, iCloud I, I for use, iPhone. And then I use and I use uh, a Google Drive. Google yeah. Drive. And I use all those too. I use all. And I physically all. make a backup of everything. Yeah, I've got time a pile machine. of hard drives back here. Time machine. I do archives. So once my time machine drive is full, I replace it. If my Dropbox gets full, I take all the old files and move it to another hard drive. It's a process. I mean, I've got a stack of hard drives in uh, my closet, but you got to have a workflow like that. Yep. Absolutely. Important. Well, this is fun. I like answering questions. I do too. We want more questions. Uh, Kyle Goodnight uh, asks, I just got a Zoom H5. Your thoughts on the Zoom? We've talked about this one before. It works. It's great. I mean, it's great for on the road. What are you using it for? I mean, yeah. if you're using it for a voiceover, it's not that convenient. Yeah. And you're recording, it, and then, then you're taking the card or plugging it in and syncing it. But Freddie over here loves it. Eddie loves yeah, yeah. it. Eddie, sorry, sorry. Uh, Eddie loves it. He loves it. He's over here. Like, yeah, it's yeah. affordable. It's affordable. It does actually sound quite good. Um, I think the Zoom H5n has an extra trick where it will be not just a recorder, but also an audio interface. So if you plug it right. in the USB. The one I have is that also. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 I, I, it, it, it'll prompt and say, do you want to use it as interface yeah. or just for charging or I whatever? I have to try it for that, but it's there. I learned yeah. that from the booth junkie. It's multi multifunctional yeah. device. Yeah. yeah so. No, I've, I've used it for that too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's, yeah. it's kind of, kind of, you know, there's a lot of to it. You got to go through, got to run through a lot of menus lot and of stuff because and it's a standalone unit. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I I wouldn't recommend it as you know your strict your, voiceover your gear. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, for it's you know if you're on the road or if you're recording sound effects for film or, or interviews or, or interviews podcasts, podcasts like a lot of people use it for podcasts. Yeah. What do you what do you, if you do? watches the booth junkies video on it? Yeah, it'll be much easier than than uh, doing it by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Just watching a video on how to use it, then learning to use it. And then, right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Booth Junkie's got great tutorial videos. Tons of them. Okay. He's been on the show. Yes. Uh, Maurice A. Scott mm -hmm. asks, uh, I've been using WaveLab, but thinking about switching to Audacity. However, Audacity keeps asking me to download a separate software program to convert a file to MP3 or MP4. Is that the same with the new Audacity? Probably because Audacity is free and the encoder that you use to encode a file to MP3, MP3 is is a licensed program, so that's why they make you step through an extra hoop. Now, what's interesting is the the MP3 encoder, which is called Lame. Lame. Yeah. It's an acronym for which I don't know what it means. Is also free, <laughs> but for whatever reason, because of licensing, they're not allowed to include it, so they have to make you install it separately. It's a pain. It's an extra step. It's dumb, but it, it it's that's how that's how it works, you know. I used WaveLab for years and years and years. Um, I kind of it's nowadays it's become so bloated and complicated. It's it's not what I remember it being. It was a lot more stripped down back in the day, and it was very to me it was Twisted Wave before Twisted Wave. But I don't blame you for wanting to try some new tools. All right, Bill. And so. And so. And so. And so. Bill and so, asked the question. Bill, yeah. Sorry, Bill. You've heard all the jokes. Um, at what level should my voice peak when recording from an analog mic? Kenny from Reaper. Oh, Reaper, Reaper Mania, Mania. must be a website. Says minus 18 dB. He explains this is the optimal level based on the way computer sound cards are calibrated or something to that effect. I feel like this doesn't give me the best signal to noise ratio. Probably There's not. Plenty of headroom <laughs> above minus 18, so why not record hotter? Thanks. Boy, we've talked about this, this question one, yeah. a lot, but hey, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah. Dan, what's your opinion on that? Uh, well, you're supposed to be, re you, you should be peaking upwards of minus six to minus four. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still plenty of headroom there. And with digital recording, you really, you can go up to zero when you're not going to overmodulate. But uh, when you cross zero, you know, that you then you run into trouble. Yeah, you fall off a cliff. Uh, but yeah, that's, you know, somebody who says that, 
uh, you know, I think it seems to be a lot of people out there who are like, oh, I'm an expert on this. But the proof is is not in what they're saying because it's like, well, I have an opinion on this. We've you and I have worked on so many studios and worked with so much recorded material. Mm. You know, there's you know, there's little variations in there, but it really is not that low. The key one, there's really one key thing he did not mention, and what and that is what bit uh, depth that he's bit recording. Depth he's recording it. Is yeah. he at sixteen bit or twenty four bit? Massive difference here. If you record at minus eighteen peak in sixteen bit. Yes, when you bring the levels up to where they need to be for... Going to be noisy, yeah. You're going to bring up some noise. It's going to add hiss. When you record at 24-bit, you will not bring up as much noise. Now, if there's noise there to begin with, because you have a noisy mic or a noisy room, yes, when you bring the levels up, you're going to hear noise. But you're not going to impart digital noise uh, when you record in 24-bit. So that's an important step. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's... uh, Levels are something people just don't seem to understand. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll do some webinars on that. I mean, the analog audio days was very different. Like you, zero was not peak. You actually went plus three, plus six, and you would, the tape manufacturer would tell you what levels you can peak at. It right. was a very different world. Um, it's, it's a little more, it's simpler, but also a little more complicated now because of bits and bit depth and everything else. Numbers. I'm never good at math. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Get Friends Voice asks... What's the best way to sync with Dropbox? And it's is it automatic? I'm currently using Bitdefender and iDrive. Um, and so uh, is it automatic? Well, with Dropbox, unless they've changed this, you still have to put all your, your work files in the Dropbox folder. Okay. So at first, it's really annoying that you have to do that. Now, someone in the chat room, you can correct me if I'm wrong, because they may have made it now so you can sync any folder on Dropbox, they may have changed it because a lot of other companies do that. A lot of the companies now, you can right click on any folder and say, sync this to the cloud. So if they've changed it, let me know. But normally you have to put all your work in Dropbox. Now I did that years ago, just part of my workflow now and it's normalized. So it's always, the files are always there. They're on any computer, get them on my phone. You know, once in a while I'll be out in the field and someone says, do you have that file? Go to my phone and find it in Dropbox and then send them the link. It's pretty sweet. Um, what else, uh, Bitdefender? I don't know anything about Bit Bitdefender. Defender. I don't. Um, iDrive, if you're an iMac, if you're a Mac user, iDrive is, the, oh, that's different from iCloud. Yeah, that's I, yeah iDrive is, is. I don't a, know iDrive. Yeah. No, I don't know. Oh, no, I do know iDrive. He iDrive know is iDrive. a synchronized and backup program that works on anything. I think it works on Mac, Windows, Android. I used it for a while, actually, and then I just didn't want to pay for yet another license. When I have Crash Plan and Dropbox and I, you know, and all the others. So I, but they're all fine, but just make sure your files are in there to begin with so that they already start syncing automatically. All right. Uh, Dave Clark asks, Dave Clark, he's still alive. Hey, Dave. All right. A while back, you talked about using a Jawbone headphone set as part of a phone patch in your your booth. booth. How did that work out? So I think I talked about it, but I don't know if I ever really tested it. (laughs) So, um, so if you guys don't know what the jawbone, okay. Jaw, well, a jawbone, I think you might, that name may not be what you're talking about. A jawbone is a, is a brand of, um, Bluetooth headset. Yeah. Jawbone, right? Um, Bluetooth would not work well because Bluetooth has latency. Has right. delay. Right. So if you're trying to listen to yourself over that, forget it. You never want to do that. And it's um, also going to interfere because it's going to re- interfere with all your routing because you've got output from Bluetooth and you've got uh, yeah, not right, a good right. idea. No, don't try to don't try to get clever with a Bluetooth transmitter and plugging that into your mixer so you can have wireless headphones. Bluetooth not not going to work. Um, he, I wonder if he's talking about the the bone conduction headphones. The bone phone. Yeah, yeah, it was I called the bone phone. Called. Yeah, you would wear, like go skiing. You would like rest on your collarbone, and then it would resonate through your bones into your ears. Uh, I, the mm-hmm. one that I have, I think it's called Aftershocks with a Z on the end. Yeah. And um, I think the problem with it was, it was a cool idea. It, it basically sits over your ears, and then it presses right here in your TMJ or whatever you call this right here. Mm-hmm. And you definitely hear it. You feel it, which is weird. But the problem is it also radiates sound itself. Uh, so, so they're not that you can not hear silent. them. Yeah. No, they're not silent. So that could be a problem for you guys. I mean, 
you know, get them on eBay cheap, 20, 30 bucks, and try them out, see what you guys yeah, think. Yeah, he meant the one that you don't put in your ears. Yeah, I think yeah. that's Aftershocks. Yeah. If I, if I, I have a pair, I bought them a long time ago to try. Thought it was a cool gimmick, but they sounded lousy. So I was not going <laughs> to use them for anything. Maybe podcasts, listening to podcasts, but yeah, didn't, didn't blow up my dress up. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll edit that one out. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> it's never going to happen. All right. Well, that's fun. All sorts of qu- We like the questions. Yes, we do. That's what this show is all about. And uh, so we need your questions. If you have a question during the week yeah. that you want us to do, a couple of these were mailed in. Email us at theguys at V-O-B-S dot TV. That's right. And uh, we will answer that question like if, we just did. And if you want to have one-on-one support. Yes. These are the guys. We've been doing this a long time. Long time. You know, you guys can long Google it time. to your blue in the face and get a, uh, you know, do not get tech support through committee. Yeah, yeah. It is don't bad. sort. Don't source. It is not the way to what, go. What's it called? Don't uh, crowdsource. Crowdsource your, your, your tech support or your if home you're studio. Trying to figure out why your Focusrite interface has a bad input. Fine, go onto the form. But if you're trying to figure out how to set up a studio for voiceover. Come to us. Right. That's the way to, this is the way you should do it. And if they want to talk to you, where do they go? Well, you head on over to georgethetech.com. Uh, and if you like shorter domains, it's georgethetech. And uh, I've got services on there. There's a menu where you can order by the service. You can also book time, request a certain amount of time that you want to work with me one-on-one, remotely or in Los Angeles. And if I'm traveling, like I am next month, I'm going up to Seattle, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to make a stop in Portland, then you can have me come to your place when I'm in your area. So uh, stay tuned to my website. Follow me on Twitter and stuff so you know when I'm going to be around. I'm I'm George the Tech everywhere on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That's where you can find me. Dan? All righty. Well, you can find me at... Oh, there I am. Homevoiceoverstudio.com. Join me uh, over there. I talk about what I do. I've been updating the site. I have, of course, the legendary Specimen Collection Cup there. Click on that. You put your audio in there, and I will analyze that for 25 bucks. If you need more help, or if you demonstrate to me that you really need lots of help, <laughs> we can talk about a full consultation yeah. and, uh, and get that going. But Or if you really know you want some help and you really don't know where to start, Check me out over there, and uh, there's a contact me button there, and you can get to me that way. All right. Well, we'll be right back to say goodbye and wrap things up and tell you who's coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop right after these. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All right. It's time to talk about Harlan Hogan. Mm-hmm. And voice over essentials. I'll just sit here like this and show off the headphones. And, and there they are. Yeah, Harlan, of course, always wants me to talk about the Harlan Hogan uh, Signature Series headphones because they are perfect. They're more perfect than they were before because they've been redesigned. They have a, 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 a the the actual cord just pops out now, just like. <laughs> that there went. Don't we don't want it you to lose better the show, in rehearsal? But, yeah, really. There we go. Uh, and uh, they're comfortable and all that. But what Harlan really wanted me to talk about this week is the fact that he's got the hangers for those that you put on your on on your mic stand. So you just take your headphones and just place them gently on there. I know it sounds like a silly accessory. I can't tell you how helpful that is, man. Have so many studios, the headphones are. <laughs> Barely hanging off the mic stand, or they're laying on the floor, or whatever. Right, it's helpful. Yeah, and and I, I have a couple, and I just put one in my new booth, which mm-hmm. used to be our guest booth. Now it's now totally just my booth. It's my space. Isn't that nice to have your space back? Yes. Yeah, so now I just gently hang my headphones there, and you can get those at VoiceOverEssentials.com. Mm-hmm. Just go over there. Best way to do it: go to the bottom of our homepage here, click on the link with Harlan Hogan talking into his Porta Booth Pro, and it will take you right there, and you can get those. Check them out. Uh, he's got them on special this week, and that's important because everything he's got is at a great price. He backs up the stuff he has. You don't like it? Send it back. What's not to like? If you buy it there, you know you're going to get the good stuff. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Thanks for being with us, Harlan. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching Voice Over Body Show. And we are back 
to say goodbye, but we got lots to tell you about first. Uh, in two weeks, or depending on when you're watching this, on <laughs> February 4th, Larry Davis will be with us. Great guy, a great you know he great impersonator of Morgan Freeman, but he does a lot of other stuff and he's a brilliant. It's, impl- not, for, he, it's not Morgan Freeman; it's his high school history, history teacher. teacher. Right, get it right. Okay, <laughs> Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that he's correct. <laughs> he'll be he'll be a lot of fun. You want to you want to you want to be there for that. Uh, we need to t- thank our donors of the week. Our donors, or, yes. like Tracy H. Reynolds, uh, Eric. Aragoni. It's so weird how it formats them somehow differently. Sometimes you see the name on the subject. Yeah. Thomas Pinto, uh, Shelly Avellino. I mean, Thanks, Shell. All these folks are subscribers. That's why you're hearing their names every show almost. Tremaine Mosley. Trey. Trey. Good guy. Um, Philip Sapir. Yeah. We haven't met yet, I don't think, but we should meet him when he's dead. Uh, and since the last time, we also have... Sarah Borges. Sarah Borges. All right. So thank you so, so much, everybody. One and it. all. And uh, if you want to donate, is the donate button still on our website? Let's go find it, shall we? Let's go look at our dun, website. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, it is. Okay. So right below it says, the chat room, please, it says, donate. please donate. <laughs> all right. I'm glad we're on the same page. There's with also that. a survey link on there, too. So up top, next to contact, there's survey. We check it out once in a while, and we see what it is you guys are thinking about what we're doing. Right. And we'd like you to subscribe to our email list. We do. We, we like that. Uh, which I think there's also a link to that on the... It's all on, on the, the website. It's the all there. Dot .tv. Yeah. All right. Make sure you go check that out. Uh, hey, you know, show us your booths, guys. I know. We're <laughs> having to dig through my archives. This is Howard Parker's. <laughs> nice which place. I did two and a half years ago. I think we can get some fresh booth photos. So, guys, send them in. We appreciate it. In... Landscape, landscape, not landscape, portrait. Not portrait. Landscape. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Well, as you know, we're now live on Alternative Mondays, so we'll be we'll be showing you all this week uh, our, an interview with our guest, and then the following week we will replay the tech segment. And that's mm-hmm. all you want to hear, mm-hmm. which you know we know some people really like hearing the tech segment. Uh, so a week of interview, the following week tech Mm -hmm. and then we go live again on Mm -hmm. february 4th with larry davis and we know most of you guys consume the show as playback yeah you can hear on a podcast or you can listen to it on or watch the show on facebook and youtube we post every show online after the show all right and uh if you'd like to be in the studio audience because we have this marvelous new studio couch in Lots here of space. show this show the studio there sue uh, and there's eddie furrier who is and, and his son chris this is chance he's yeah. been sitting here all, all night, night for that moment and there he yeah, is, baby. is that yeah. One right yeah <laughs> so we got all this room in here we'd like to have you in here live for uh watching the show live uh so write to us at the guys at vobs.tv and put audience mm-hmm. and tell us you know if you're going to be in the greater los angeles area which is pretty great uh getting greater all the time all the time uh we need to thank our sponsors like harlan hogan's uh voiceover essentials voiceover extra vo2gogo.com source elements uh voiceactorwebsites.com and uh j michael collins demos all right we also need to thank the dan and marcy leonard foundation for the betterment of webcasting Yes. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curtin, for getting us great guests. And uh, and they just keep piling up. There's a huge list of great guests who will keep getting even better. Uh, Mike Merlino was in the chat room tonight. Did a great job. Got all those questions on there. Way to go, Mike. Uh, and, of course, uh, his mom, our studio director and technical director, Sue Merlino, who's there. I can't sing any higher. I screwed I that up. Oh, and, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being <laughs> Lee Penny. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight on Voice Over Body Shop. And uh, remember, if it sounds good, it is good. Hey, we got that right. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>